हरि ओम स्टार्ट द प्रेयर ओम समस्त जन कल्याणी निरत करुणा नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर वसुदेव सुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु माता च पितामे तमेव बंधु सखात्मे विद्याद्रविडम सर्व मम देवेव तमेव सर्व गुरदेव देव हरि ओम वे आर् डूइंग द पंचदशी सेवन चैप्टर वे आर विद्यारण्य नौ डिस्कसिंग अबउट तत्वसी स्टेटमेंट एंड रिमेबरिंग दट आल दिस डिस्कशन इज ओनली ए कामेंट्री आन दि ब्रह्म दि बृहदारण्यक उपनिषद स्टेटमेंट आत्मा चेदीयाद अहमस्मी पुष किमी कस्य काम शरीर अनुसंजरे सो इज प्रोवैडिंग एक्सास्टिव अनालिस ऑफ वाट इज पुष एंड ऐ एम अस्मी ऑल दि डिस्कशन इज ऐ एम दैट दिस् ऐ एम सो वाट इज दिस् एंड वाट इज ऐ एम बीइंग डिफाइंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ तत्वसी स्टेटमेंट and that's what he has discussed so far in terms of both parokshya gyanam and aparokshya gyanam that is indirect knowledge about the, there is a god there is ishvara and ishvara is nothing but the creator is not different from the creation because abhinna nimitta upadana karanam that is non difference between the creation and the creator karanam karanam karta so in the vishnu sahasrana he says he is karanam and is karanam also and karta so he is not only a, in, the indigent cause but he is karanam the material cause also he is karanam and karanam karanam karta so he is instrumental cause also so he is both the material and the intelligent and instrumental cause all that comes because of the maya shakti he creates the whole universe as it is daivim ishagunamayi mamamaya duratsheya my maya is of the divine nature that which provides the whole universe itself and that's difficult to cross because it is infinite and only way to get out of this is by surrendering to me mameva e prapadyante mameva by surrendering to me alone what is that you can surrender you can surrender only what belongs to you you can surrender you cannot surrender something that doesn't belong to you what you came in this world is not with nothing so nothing is everything is only acquired from the world that is acquired from the god only so you came with nothing and you are going to leave everything here and go so what is they that came is your dharma only so sarva dharman parityanja mame ekam saranam vaja so give up all the notion that i am a doer that is essentially sarva dharman parityanja not give up the doing give up the notion that i am a kartrutva bhavam and bhoktrutva bhavam has to be given that's what is sarva dharman parityanja mam ekam saranam vaja and ahantva sarva papebhyo if you surrender yourself your the kartrutva bhavam is coming up from the ahankara because i am the doer notion that when you give up that then automatically the you essentially re- realize giving up is claiming what you are because you cannot give up unless you know what you are so that's essentially that called sanyasa yoga sanyasa yoga but you cannot give, give up something sanyasa until you hold on so you have to hold on to the higher level before you give up the lower level otherwise you will fall down so hold on to his feet and give up everything else that is what is called sanyasa yoga yoga is to yoking your mind to the higher higher and therefore giving up the lower pursuits of happiness that's what giving up is the, the thinking that there is happiness out there you give up that but you go to higher giving up is not just discarding it <coughs> giving up the ownership means you have only a dharma karta dharma karta is you are only a, a trustee of what it is operate properly so that you can because god god has handed over some trust to you operate and do his, his work in terms of proper distribution of whatever you are earning and so on <coughs> oh boy my phone off and now and now changa exhaust fan so evam sati 
So the, the teaching is that Aham Brahmasmi has to be given by Parotsha Jnanam and all that. So now the question that from now on the uh, discussion is from Sloka 79 is going to take up the criticism of Advaita Vedanta, not Advaita Vedanta, this the Mahatatvam where the, the direct knowledge that I am that is being criticized and other Acharyas taken up says you cannot be that so so therefore they interpreted the Tattvamasi in a different way and their interpretation says you are part of it like the the Bhagavan Ramanujas says Tattvamasi is not identity but you are only part of this the of the total as you are a Viseshana because you only part of the total body and you become a, a qualified for the for the Lord. So you become a Viseshana and he is a Visista. So they are called Sesha Seshi Bhava. So your whole body is total but your hand is your property. Your property in a sense says you have good body, this body, so you, your ownership is yours and but hand is not yours. It's only part of your body. So in the total body of the Ishvara, are called Virat Swarupam, and in that you are only a speck there, which is essentially part. You are essentially part of the total, constituting the total, because you cannot be away from him. And that is, therefore, this is not give you a direct knowledge. It is not really direct, but it's not indirect according to the Vishishtadvaita. You are learning that you are part of the total also. At the same time, you are not the total. So it is a partial knowledge. So it's called, it is a Advaita only, but it's called Vishishtadvaita. Vishishta Advaita means qualified Advaita. What is qualification? Qualification is that you and Jagat form the Visheshanas or the Visishta. So how, that's why from the Bhagavan Ramanuja point, the, there is a internal differences in the Brahman. So Sajati Vijati Veda is there, but is not there, but Swagata Veda are there. That means internal differences. Internal differences, there is a, the body, the Advaita Brahman, total Brahman is made up of the body, which body comes constituting the particles of all the jivas forming and also Jagat forming a part of the body. So you have both Chaitanya and Achaitanya as part of the total body of the Ishvara. And in that, there is one jiva differ from another jiva. So jiva jiva bhinnatvam is there and jiva jagat bhinnatvam is there. Matter is different from chit and achit, that is achit. So achit and chit, one is conscious entity, another is unconscious entity. That's all it means, chit achit. So the, the jiva is conscious entity because I am conscious of things and the, the um, inner things are not conscious. So there is a jiva jagat bhinnatvam and in the jagat there are difference of varieties are there that is also the between one object and another object bhinnatvam is there. So vastu vastu bhinnatvam is there in the jagat and jiva jiva bhinnatvam, jiva jagat bhinnatvam, jiva ishwara bhinnatvam, jagat ishwara bhinnatvam, all bhinnatvams are part of the total system but yet God pervades everything, it's one that pervading all the bhinnas called antaryamin. So it is not complete ad the advaita, it's not essentially oneness that is thought what the tattvamasi statement is. Though tattvamasi, he uses the tattvamasi only but tat and tvam belongs to one is viseshana, another is visishta. Visishta means a locus of viseshana. The viseshana is a, a quality. So if I, the, he gives an example, is a blue lotus, Neelotpalam. So Neelam Utpalam, both are of the same type, Neelam and Neelam is blue, ne? blue and lotus. Lo blue lotus is what? Blue lotus is only one. There are no two blue and blue, two lotus, they are not two separate. But one is Viseshana for the Visishta. Viseshana is qualification of the lotus. So it is blue lotus, not a red lotus. So blueness belongs to lotus. So the Viseshana cannot exist independent of the lotus. 
that means blueness cannot exist without having a locus for it the blueness blueness is only an attribute for the for the for the lok for the lotus therefore it is the different is it depends on the lotus its existence depends on the lotus and it can survive only with the lotus and it still can inseparable but it's not same as lotus blueness is not the same as lotus therefore blueness is different from lotusness and therefore there appears to be two but appearing as one and that's called visishta advaita so this swam padartham ramanuja bhagavan ramanuja interprets as visheshana visesha abhyam samana adhikaranam so in the visheshana visebhya there is a samana adhikaranam the equal emphasis as though at called form is visheshana the visheshana and tat is visesha and visheshana visesha there is a samana adhikaranam therefore equation is only in that sense and that's what his interpretation and therefore this is only the fact being stated there there is only an indirect knowledge only and there is no direct knowledge of i am going to be something there is nothing of that it's only information to know that you are part of the lord you depend on the lord he is the is a controller he is the sustainer and everything you have different from the lord you are only your your role is only to serve the lord the the purpose of the hand is to serve me so but sir the hand cannot go operate one way stomach cannot do independently all those things they are all serve the one body for the existence of the body if the body if the hand refuses to serve then the body deteriorates therefore the every component of the body is meant for serving the so that is called the dasoham says i am your dasa i am your you are my controller and that's the the saranagati aspect of the clear understanding of the vedanta tatvamasi so it's is in a way indirect knowledge and here vijayaranya criticizes these various without mentioning particular acharyas and all that so he comes around the 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 14th 15th century by the time there is advaita and also dvaita and visishta dvaita develop and each criticizing the other and therefore some of the objections have been raised and vidyaranya here touches a little bit on that and besides that there is also nyaya and uh, vaisheshika systems which are log- logicians we already took some objections by that and also we have the sankhya and yoga also and those are also being treated in terms of the the consideration and also we have buddhism or different types of buddhism also there in in the philosophical tradition so we'll read the 79 shloka evam sati mahavakyat evam sati mahavakyat parokshya jnanam iryate parokshya jnanam iryate ಶೋಭತೇತರಾ so even though it is says tatvamasi you are equal to that evam sati yaihi by those mahavakyat paroksha gnanam iryate so there are some people says this mahavakya what you call mahavakya special statements emphasizing the great statements of the upanishad that's what advaitin calls it but for them it is regular other like any other statements these also some of the statements in the in the in the upanishad so mahavakya paroksha gnanam iryate so you can get only indirect knowledge about the nature of god that's what some of the philosophers and they propose siddhantam so yaistesham yaha yahi by those tesham shastra siddhanta vigyanam those people who are who are experts in the shastras some of them claim that they are experts in the shastras shastra vigyana siddhantam 
Siddhanta Vijnanam Sobate Taram So this is essential Sobate We have to praise their worthiness uh, This is essentially He is sarcastically saying Say how oh, They are wonders they are, def they are defining this As though it is an indirect knowledge is a parotcha jnanam, there is no pratyaksha jnanam or aparotcha jnanam is not there. All it says is that jiva is part of the totality and jiva is a visheshana, that is from the visishta advaita point. From the advaita, from the dvaita point, that's why you were not there because from the dvaita point is not even a material cause. So they don't believe that himself created from himself because he is so pure, parabrahma, and Parabrahma is completely, so he has a Prakriti as a part of the separate and Prakriti, using a Prakriti he creates because my Adyachena Prakriti is Suyate Sacharacharam. Under my Adyaksha Prakriti, Prakriti are essentially a servant that is being used in order to create. So Ishvara is different, completely different from the Prakriti, even though he pervades it. So they have peculiar philosophy. Ishwara is different. At the same time, he pervades that also. So in that way, you have ekatvam, but they don't accept the ekatvam. So he says, this statement has nothing to do. In fact, they interpret completely differently. Instead of tattvamasi, they say atattvamasi svetaketo. So why? Because you can split it in that form. Aijadatma Vidagun Sarvam Tat Satyam Sa Atma Tatvamasi. So Atma Tatvamasi. Atma Atatvamasi. You can also say like Atma Tatvamasi. You can also say. So you can differentiate that uh, Sandhi in terms of Atma Tatvamasi. Atma plus Atatvamasi. Or Atma plus Tatvamasi. So Atma plus Atatvamasi means what? You are not that. So what do you are not that? Aitya Atma Midagum Sarvam Tat Satyam. This whole universe is essentially Sat. And that Atma Satyam, that is Satyam. And that Atma you are not. So that's what the instruction is. So why he has to say you are not? Does he have confusion that I am, I am not to say that you are not? And that too, it is repeated nine times. Why he has to say, I know I am not God. I know I am not this universe. I don't need a teaching to tell me that I am not that. If the teaching is, tells me that I am that, then I need to know how can I be that. Then it says that you are not that directly, but you are in essence in terms of essentially it is that. Then I have to think about it. So here the statement is repeated nine times and they interpret the same by using so the splitting the words as sa atma atattvamasi sveta ketu. So you are not that. So it is not even a a parotcha jnana, it's only indirectly you know the whole world and you are not that. That is what is essentially. And for those great, great Siddhantins who, who have Shastra Siddhanta Vijnanam, we appreciate their knowledge and keep away from them. Essentially, Sobhate Taram, so sarcastically, is saying they are worthy of praise. Oh, what a great philosopher you are. You are interpreting this as though it is, we, we don't need any more further interpretation. I am not that, we don't need that kind of interpretation. But sarcastically is praising, so what a great fool you are instead of saying that, what a great wise man you are. That's what uh, Jarana says in the sloka. So it is more a sarcastic statement about, say, Sobhate Itaram. So we say is worthy of praise and for, for your great interpretation that it's not, it is only Parotcha Jnanam. And if you say it's Parotcha Jnanam, they use logic also to prove that it is Parotcha Jnanam only. So that is going to criticize now in the next sloka. Astam Shastrasya Siddhanto Astam Shastrasya Siddhanto Yukcha Vakyat Parochadihi Yukcha Vakyat Parochadihi Sargadi Vakyavan Naivam Sargadi Vakyavat Naivam Vakyavan Vakyavat Naivam Dasame Vyavicharitaha Dasame Vyavicharataha Together, Astam Sastrasya Siddhanto Yukya Vakyat Parochadi Sargadi Vakyavat Naivam Vagyavat Naivam Dasami Vyabicharitaha 
सुसर्गादि वाक्यवत् एवं सो अस्ताम आस्ताम आस्ताम शास्त्रस्य सिद्धांत हाँ सो शास्त्रज्ञ सिद्धांत हाँ देर आर डिक्लेरेशंस बाय समदर्शा सो ग्रेट्स शास्त्रीज दैट अबाउट शास्त्रम आ डिक्लेरेशन ऑफ दैट इज आस्ताम लेट देर बी वाक्यार परोक्षदी ही इट्स ओनली इनडायरेक्ट नॉलेज एंड युक्तियाँ प्रोवाइडेड बाय इनफरेंस so you can logically deduce so they use some kind of logic to prove that this statement that tattvamasi is only an inferential statement that you are indeed something completely indirect knowledge and therefore they use how because it is swargadi vakya neva so there is a heaven there is a hell hell it says you cannot logically deduce it it's a statement of fact of something that you have to believe and that's what you say is is a statement of that belong to that type that type so some justify that it's only indirect knowledge indirect knowledge is only paroksha gyanam there is no pratyaksha gyanam there is no immediate direct i am that it cannot be done it's only indirectly yeah, you are great you are brahman you are great something like that or there is a, there is a heaven and hell so heaven and hell i cannot show it to you i show only indirect knowledge by listening to that yes there is a heaven and there is heaven so uh, the atma is brahman you only indirect knowledge there is nothing to realize in this that's what essentially is implied therefore swarga adi vakya vanaiva it is like swarga swarga means swarga naraka etc which dharma all those things that are imperceptible that cannot be established by perception or by logic you can say it shastra says so then you have to believe it there is a heaven there is a hell and all that the life after life we don't know what is life after life and life before life all that comes shastra only you can infer that because people are different in different religions there was one lady who went to uh, kanchi kamakoti and this is an american lady or english lady she went and asked sir please prove that there is a life before so this went and asked uh, the lady to to the to kanchikama koti says please prove that there is a life before so how can you prove show me how, how you can prove so kanchikama koti asked her to go to the to the prasuti where the delivery place where the babies are delivered you go there observe for 3 days and come back to me that's all he answered So I said, if she wanted to know, is there proof for is there a life before and so on? Previous life is there. Is there? If she wants a proof for it, and what he says is, go to a delivery place and observe three days, and observe everything there, and come back after three days. That's what he said. So she went there and watched for three days, observing, and came back. Sir, I don't need any more answers. I understood. but there is a life before so how did she get understanding when she went to the to the delivery place and all the thing is babies are delivered then she found out when we went there there are different grades of babies there some are in the ac room and the babies are being born in the ac room and some are very poor they have small rooms and they are they are being delivered in many many babies are being delivered in the same room and all that they are having in the other place they don't have even that room also and they are essentially coming urgently and something and they being delivered in the in the in the carpet or in the bed or whatever but that's what it is now since why these babies have not these babies are different one, one baby is having um, in the ac room and people are coming in and uh, giving gift for the baby for the parents and congratulating everybody celebrating and all that and that baby has arrived and the baby is being pampered in in that room in the other room people they are some home they are managing the husband is not there wife is delivering because uh, it's so expensive uh, husband is running around to get money to pay for it and he doesn't have he is suffering there and the mom and the and the wife is delivering here and in third place even that is not there this so is even that is some home being delivered so the babies have not done but there is a gradation for the baby of comforts why did this disparity in the babies are coming in 
they have not done anything to deserve one baby deserving all the credit and other baby doesn't deserve all these things and there will be no 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 one to care for and this disparity she understood because of the previous life only so she didn't have to ask any, any question anymore because she wanted to know a proof for the previous life and he just sent him to send, send the lady to go and observe the delivery place and she came back with an answer to her satisfaction that i don't need any more that question because now i understood there must be a life before so that itself is a proof so here swarga the vakya he there is a heaven and hell and all that how do you prove this is that's only shastra becomes a proof because no one has come back from the heaven or hell this is you know in the in the in the other religions if you believe in that you go to heaven if you don't believe in that you go to eternal hell and says how do you know that so what bible says so how do you believe you have to believe that so suppose anybody has come back from heaven or come back from hell to tell you that you, i didn't go through your your religion therefore uh, i will not be so one went uh, one uh, religious teacher the the priest was traveling with a swami and and he was asking the swami if you don't believe you go to hell so swami said okay but how about you i am going to hell or heaven because the uh, because i i am saved i believe in christ therefore i go to heaven since you don't believe in christ you are going to go to eternal hell then swami said i am glad i am not going to go place where you are going to be because that going to be real hell <laughs> so it's not that the the idea of the of the understanding is essentially it is dasame vyabichara vyabicharata ha it is like the 10th man has to discover himself what we are looking for because we are not looking for god anything we are looking for happiness only so the statement that it's going to be indirect knowledge is saying that the he got indirect knowledge of that there is a 10th person now he has to meditate on it or he has to sit on it that i am the 10th man i am the 10th man and still looking for the 10th man so it's like the inferential statement so that's what he is negating dismissing the some of the arguments of the other acharyas here so another person says sir if i become if i become brahmasmi then i am going to lose myself i am going essentially my i am gone so it is like a, a self dissolution philosophy that means i am going to get destroyed and only brahman is going to be there so what good is this if i am going to be destroyed that is his problem so he says swato parikshat jeevasya this is 81 swato paro swato parokshat jeevasya brahma tattvam abhivanchatah brahma brahma tattvam abhivanchatah nasye siddha parokshatvam नशे सिद्धा परोक्षत्वम इति युक्तिर्न महत्य महत्य हो इति युक्तिर्न महत्य हो स्वतो परोक्षजीवस्य ब्रह्मत्वनुभव ब्रह्मत्वमनुभवानचतः ब्रह्मत्वनुभवानचतः नशे सिद्धा परोक्षत्वम इति युक्तिर्न महो महत्य हो so brahmatvam in the brahman or in the brahmanhood or in the nature of that i am brahman abhivanchitah desiring if i am try want to become i want to become i want to, i am to realize that aham brahma asmi in the desire swatah jeevasya aparoksha jeevah siddham says in that uh, the jeeva notion itself is gone because i am directly saying i am that brahman so jeeva is gone so i am recognizing that i am the totality so it is a self destruction process it's not self on a self realization process so according to this the interpretations so it is self destruction process because in the nature of understanding that i am brahmasmi i am no more jeeva so my jeeva hood is gone in gaining the brahman hood so that's what is going to happen so if that is nasye siddha parokshatvam and this is what happens to the siddha this is aparokshatvam nasye iti this 
this, uh, by this analysis of this Advaita Vedanta, you are only going to get destroyed yourself in the realization that there is only Brahman and no more Jiva. So it is a self-destructive hypothesis. So this is what some great, see, oh, Mahati Yuktihi, oh, oh, Mahati Yuktihi, some great people interpret like that. Great people is, so he is essentially calling them as a fools. But actually in the, in the, in Ramana Maharshi Saddarshanam, he, he gives a beautiful sloka of the second sloka. So in the first sloka is, he takes into highest philosophy. Sat pratyaya kinnu vihaya santam Nudyeshu chinta rahito hrudakya Katam smarama tamameya mekam Tasya smuti tatra dudha eva nishta That is from the jnana point. Which we take, took up last time, some time back. And in the next term, next sloka it says, Mrutyunjayam mrutyubhyasritanam Aham matir mrutyum upaiti jeevaha So it gives a story of Mrutyunjayam mrutyubhyasritanam So in the, uh, the story, the, I don't remember the Mrutyunjayam mrutyubhyasritanam Aham matir mrutyum upaiti purvam so, in the uh, one young boy who is a 16 year old boy, and uh, the, he was uh, he said he's going to be born as only up to 16 because his parents asked for a son, and the God gave them choice. You want a wonderful son, a well educated and highly high knowledgeable person, but he is going to live only for 16 years, or a rotten son who makes your life and everybody's life miserable, but he lives forever. So, which type of son you want? So, it's a hard, a very difficult choice. A choice that you don't want it, but what else you do? Lord gives you only that choice. So, they prefer at least a son who is good and who is valuable and who is uh, intelligent enough, even if he lives for 16 years. Even though they're going to survive the death of their child, they preferred that than a rotten guy that they have to suffer while living. So, a son was born and in the 16th birthday, the parents were crying almost because that is the last day. So, when the student asked, why are you crying? Because then they told him the story. He says, don't worry, I'm going to Lord Shiva, I'll be back. So, he went to Lord Shiva and the great Lord Shiva. So he approached Lord Shiva to get to, so that he will not be dying. So who is this Lord Shiva? Mrutyunjayaha. Mrutyunjaya means who is a conqueror of, of the death. So because he is a conqueror of the death, he approached the, the God who is conqueror of the death because he doesn't want to die. So he went to, to the Lord to surrender himself. So, he says, Mrutyunjayam Mrutyubhyasritanam. So, Bhakta approached the Lord Mrutyunjayaha, that is Lord Shiva, so, so that he doesn't have to die. That's what he wants to go and he went there. And Mrutyunjayaham Matir Mrutyumupayiti Purvam. He says, the, the Lord destroyed the devotee himself. Devotee has come to surrender to the Lord. So he said, please save me from the death. Instead of saving him from the death, he destroyed the devotee. That's the name of the sloka. So what good is that Lord? So essentially, what he destroyed is not the not the, the jiva, but destroyed the jiva notion that involves that I am the one who dies. So what he what he is clear, ahammatir purvam, the notion that I am a, I am a mortal is destroyed. So there, there is no more devotee deity there. The reality is gone. So that means he has recognized aham brahmasmi, I am eternal, I am never born to be. So someone when asked, say, do you believe in reincarnation? Someone asked Swamiji, so do you believe in reincarnation? What do you mean do I believe in reincarnation? I don't believe in the first incarnation to have to believe in reincarnation. Because I'm never a time I was not there, never a time you are not there. So never a time I was not there. Where is the question of 
reincarnation. Only when I die, I have to reincarnate. Whenever I never die, what is the reincarnation? So reincarnation has only meaning only for the body, occupying a body. So that's all it means. This is essentially the guys who think that uh, the, uh, I'm going to be destroyed is itself is, we have to laugh at them only. So, iti yukti, mahacha ho ho, aho, mahati yukti, aho. This is uh, some great, mahati, mahati, great fools, great people interpret that I'm going to be gone because it's a self-destructive process rather than self-realization process. Because in the process, the jiva is gone and you recognition that aham brahmasmi. So therefore, there is no point in gaining that knowledge when you are not going to be there. That's essentially their argument. So this is a, uh, it's like a going to, I want to invest something, so I'm going for adhyatma so that I can be more happy. In the process, I get destroyed completely. So the, it's like I want to invest somewhere and I want money to grow so I am putting some investment amount, some X amount and I want to become it's a 2X, 3X, 4X or double X and so on so that X plus something I want to become so that's why I am investing in stocks here and stocks there and stock there and so on and so forth so that X can become a big, that's called Vruddhi. But what happens is, if the original itself is get lost, what good is that? So if original jiva that I want to become happy and I want to gain this one, so I'm going to go and do meditate and on that. In the process, I myself get destroyed. Then what good is that, the teaching itself? So that example is given. So asal, 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 asal is essentially the principle itself is getting lost. And that's what is essentially being discussed again in the next sloka. Ruddhim ishtavato moolam Ruddhim ishtavato moolam Apinashtamiti Apinashtamiti idrusham Apinashtam moolam Apinashtamiti idrusham Laukikam vachanam sartham Laukikam vachanam swartham Sampanna Sampannam tat prasadataha Sampannam tat prasadataha So vuddhi ishtamataha So having desire to grow for the investment So desiring the increase of his capital Moolam api If moolam api Nashtaiti idusham It is like the destruction of the moolam itself The basic principle itself is gone in the process The basic jiva itself getting dissolved in the process of becoming Brahman Because I am no more there I am no more, I am as a jiva no more there, I am a Brahman has become. So that's essentially laukikam vachanam sartham, this statement that when so I want to invest, I, I went, I've invested and my whole principle itself is gone in that, in that investment. It's like a laukika vachanam, it is statement like, the normal saying people say that, it is like that going to Vedanta class, in the Vedanta class I wanted to gain happiness but in the process I myself got destroyed. So that's what essentially is happening. And laukikam vachanam sar sam sampannam tat prasada. Thank you sir for I got this this result that I'm, I, I lost my own capital itself because I came to the Vedanta class. That's what is essentially one fellow says a criticism of Tattvamasi. So essentially, the, the, am I losing something in the process of gaining that Aham Brahmasmi? That's the question. The question in all these things is, in the process, when I name that Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Jeevosmi is gone. So how is that possible? That's going to be answered in the next sloka. We just chant it and since the time is up, we will just give the word meaning and again explain tomorrow in the next class. Antakkarana sambhinna, Antakkarana sambhinna, Bodo jivo parochatam, Bodo jivo parochatam, Arhat chupadi sadbhavat, Arhat chupadi sadbhavat, Natu brahmanu paditam, 
न तो ब्रह्मानुपादित सो जीव अपरोक्षताम so the in the direct knowledge of the that uh, that for a jiva arhati is possible only along with antakarana sambhinna bodaha so along with the antakarana samband sambindham along with the the instruments of the inner along with the buddhi mind and only is possible to understand that i am brahman so here nothing is lost here only your confusion is lost so here he is explaining that all these previous fellows have said that completely it's a, it's a jiva is completely gone moolam is just moolam is gone for gaining some some capital i lost the moolam moolam itself i got the capital itself says so nothing is lost what you gain only what is lost is only your confusion about what is your nature and what is your pursuit is that all is only your confusion and ignorance is gone nothing else is gone so this understanding of aparocha gyanam that i am the brahman does not eliminate anything other than confusion so antakarana sambhinna bodo jivo parochatam arhati upadi sadhava nadu brahma anupaditam so not the brahman without any conditioning it is with the conditioning only i understand that i am the brahman how is going to be explained more in terms of the analysis of who is the realization here or what is the realization in the world we will understand we will take up this in the next class shloka 83 and on with this we stop here Om Purnamadah Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Sri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om